Leinster are into the Heineken Champions Cup final for a sixth time. A dominant 40 points to 17 win over Toulouse here at the Aviva Stadium. They're going to face La Rochelle or Rassi 92 now in the decider on Saturday, May 28th, the same day as the Champions League final between Liverpool and Real Madrid. We're on air at the Aviva Stadium and off the ball here on Saturday until 6 o'clock. John Duggan with you as always. Alan Quinlan will reflect upon what we've seen here today in a few moments' time. Let's just bring up to speed, though, what's been happening elsewhere in the world of sport. The FA Cup final is underway between Liverpool and Chelsea at Wembley. The Liverpool team, Alisson, Alexander-Arnold, Konate, Van Dijk and Robertson, Henderson, Thiago, Keita, Salah, Mane and Diaz. We also have the Chelsea team in as well, which is Mendy, Shalaba, Thiago Silva, Rudiger, James, Kovacic, Jorginho, Alonso, Mount, Pulisic and Lukaku. It's goalless after 14 minutes of that FA Cup final. Earlier on in the Scottish Premiership, Celtic celebrated being champions by thrashing Motherwell by six goals to nil. Rangers won 3-1 at Hearts. Dundee United were 2-1 winners at Ross County. In the Championship playoff semi-final, first leg has ended. Sheffield United won, Nottingham Forest 2. Tonight, Sligo Rovers take on St. Pat's in the League of Ireland Premier Division at the showgrounds in 7.45. One score in the Women's National League at the moment. Dealer Waves won, Sligo Rovers won. Uh, it's Leash against Galway in a matter of minutes at O'Moore Park in the Leinster Round Robin. Kilkenny in Dublin at 7 o'clock. Westmeath and Wexford are throwing in their match at Cusick Park from half past six in the John McDonough Cup earlier on awfully edge carry by 4.23 to 2.28 in Tralee at Netwatch Cullen Park Carlo beat down by 2.25 to 1.19 just about to throw in at the Airgrid All-Ireland Under-20 final in Park and Shannon it is Tyrone against Kildare and also Tipperary and Limerick meeting at Semple Stadium at 7 o'clock for the right to take on Kerry in the Munster Senior Football Championship final and the Group 1 lock-in stakes at Newbury was won by the 9-4 on favourite Baid Alan Quinlan you've been able to catch your breath after that that was a very imposing dominant control performance by Leinster thoroughly deserved victory for them and their celebration in front of their fans here at the Vida Stadium and they gave their fans something to cheer about today yeah fully deserving John to go to the final they were brilliant today right from the off um, Toulouse really poor I think but you know we we cannot focus on that I think we got to focus on the way Leinster yeah. played and the excellence that they showed the quality, the control, the breakdown work and the r- ruthlessness. I think you said they were relentless at one stage, I think at half time. And yeah. that, that sums them up. They were relentless throughout the game and they they just made a very powerful and talented Toulouse side look really, really bad today. They had another level from the Leicester game and if they've got another level in the final, they're going to win it. Yeah, well, look, they were the favourites, I think, uh, coming into this game. They've, they've won it by, by 23 points. Uh, the bookies were probably... A 10, 10 point winners. Qu- Quinn, Quinn, you said 20, so that's not too well, bad. Well, I said uh, 10 to 15 last <laughs> week, and uh, it doesn't surprise me, John, because uh, the only concern I said before the game was mentally could Leinster kind of cope with the expectation, and they showed it today. Uh, so much control, composure, pace to their game. They asked so many questions at Toulouse defence, and the opposite, Toulouse didn't really ask any questions. They got one breakaway try early on in the game from Dupont. He's very fortuitous. And he goes the length of the field and Talafua scores off them all in the second. Otherwise, Leinster never in any sort of trouble. Toulouse didn't build any sort of momentum or or, uh, or pressure on that Leinster line. So it was I don't think the result was ever in doubt once Leinster, you know, pulled away there at the start of the second half, got the third try and uh, Hugo Keenan finishes it off uh, at the end, but they were utterly dominant throughout the whole game. Which was interesting when Dupont scored that try early on, that intercept, uh, Quinny, is that Leinster weren't ruffled in any way whatsoever. They just kept going. Yeah, and that's a sign that uh, they were very composed and calm and, and they backed uh, the game plan. And, and there's a confidence about them, a self-belief that, you know, if something goes wrong, you just react quickly and uh, exactly what you want your team to do. And I think they showed that throughout the whole 80 minutes. Uh, Toulouse had a little bit of a kind of dominant spell for about 10 minutes of that second half and... Leinster didn't panic in any way. Their defence was superb and collectively they just worked so hard for each other. I think Johnny Sexton uh, was sublime in his performance uh, but he and he's a pretty honest guy so he'll be thanking his pack of forwards for the, the, the kind of armchair ride that they gave him and when he gets that kind of time space on the ball his kicking was brilliant, he's passing. You know, he could go right across the board. Such, such brilliant performances from Leinster today and they made 
the, the last year's champions looked very, very average, and uh, I think they've answered a lot of questions. We were talking about the physicality and the build-up to this game, what happened against Saracens a few years ago, La Rochelle last year, and they just played with a control and a tempo and an energy today that was, was second to none, and it was so much better than, than what Toulouse offered. And Sexton with a lovely dummy for that second try by van der Fleer. Yeah, and it's uh, absolutely, he makes a break, uh, has the experience, good decision-making to hold up, don't panic, waited a little bit for, for van der Fleer, put lovely weight on the pass, and uh, van der Fleer accelerated, had to wriggle over the line. It was a legitimate try, perfect try, and a great score. But the, the ball that Sexton got from that breakdown, John, Maloney, was, yeah. it was... You know, it was it was a one-second breakdown, and that was summed it up today. And uh, you just cannot, if you're trying to beat Leinster, you can't allow him be that dominant, get across the gain line. And uh, their discipline was poor as well to lose, but that was down to the pressure that Leinster put them under, the ability to just keep recycling the ball, and and they panicked and they they walked around the field at times the Toulouse players, and just a game too far for them, pretty much, was it? Probably a game too far for them, but I said it before last week's game. You know, for Munster last week, the, the, cha- the only chance they had against Toulouse was to hold on to the ball, build phases. And Leinster are obviously, and they showed that in the URC a number of weeks ago, they beat Munster convincingly down at Thoman Park. Th- there's a difference here. Leinster are the best side in Ireland, and they've proved that again today. And they probably put it in, in context and perspective last week, how, how the effort Munster made nearly won the game, probably could have and should have won it in the end but they showed the difference in, in, in teams today and, and how good they are and how, how far ahead they are of the other provinces and how much, much of a well-balanced side they are. If you're joining us here on Off the Ball Saturday, Leinster 40 points to lose 17. Leinster going to Marseille in two weeks' time, the Stade Velodrome for the Heineken Champions Cup final, their sixth final. They'll play La Rochelle or Rassi 92 in the decider. Quinny, James Lowe, two tries, ten tries in the competition this season, probably playing the best rugby of his life. Brilliant, and not just scoring the tries, because we saw a few years ago James Lowe scoring lots of tries but making mistakes defensively. He's all round game today, he's kicking game. Even when he doesn't have the ball, the pressure he's putting on the opposition, the kick chase, uh, the offloads, you know, so powerful when he comes in field making those carries. It was He was really, really brilliant, and he looks a different player. He looks um, really complete in, in, in what he's trying to do. Um, obviously for a winger you know you want him scoring those tries and he's doing that but the rest of his game has just improved no end and he's shown that with Ireland the way he responded uh, had defensive issues and problems with his defence in last year's Six Nations uh, played really well for Ireland this year and uh, he's playing really well and consistent for Leinster and that left boot is is can be so effective and you know he did he, he cleared the ball so well for Leinster today at times and uh albeit with very, very little pressure from that Toulouse kick chase. His fellow uh, New Zealand-born um, uh, colleague, uh, Jameson Gibson-Park, to me, he's the whole symbol of what Leinster and almost Ireland are about, the way they play at the moment, the tempo, keeping the ball moving quickly. Sometimes there can be errors in that. We saw with the Gerber kick earlier on. But I think that's it's better to, to chance it and to go for it rather than having ponderous play. And Gibson-Park, to me, just sets the tone for the whole thing. Do you agree? Absolutely. Um, you know, he's a risk taker, isn't he? Yeah. He takes chances, he bounces out of breakdowns, he's trying little pop passes, full of energy, um, and a very good decision maker. You know, even, you know, everybody makes a mistake at some stage, no matter how good you are, and, and that decision in the first half to try that little grubber. If the grubber goes through, Leinster could score, and uh, Toulouse just blocked it. Um, so I wouldn't hold that against him. He was superb today, but... Um, his range of passing, the timing of the pass, the, the the ability to bounce out of the breakdown and give short little passes to runners coming hard, and uh, he looks so relaxed and controlled, and full of confidence in his performance. But you know, I keep saying it, Sexton, Gibson, Park were outstanding, but the the, Tolu- the Leinster pack as a group, and they had a hammer blow, as you know, and the Tyke fir- going, going off, yeah. going off. Ala, Ala, Ala Toa came on one issue at one scrum, but other than that. He had a big performance as well. So it's a seamless kind of a transition with players coming off the bench. And uh, and that's, uh, for Tyke Furlong, you think, oh, in a tighter game, Leinster in trouble here. But that's a testament, isn't it, to the, the strength of the of the pack, maybe at a better level than it was a couple of seasons ago. Yes, definitely, with Keane Healy and uh, 
and uh, um, Dan Sheen, Dan Sheen had, had a couple of great well. hits, yeah, didn't he? Brilliant. He's such a good player, I think. And Keller as well took a, took a heavy knock. They took him off for HIA, but um, he was never going to come back on because Sheehan is such a good player as well. And, uh, you know, they're the two hookers that are going to be on the plane to New Zealand. They were involved for the Six Nations. Um, and they were right top of the pile, really. And uh, overall, it was a brilliant, brilliant performance from them. One player I will pick out who's not an international... Um, is Ross Maloney. I think he's uh, he had a brilliant performance. Why? Just because I think he's been knocking on the door for a number of years now, and I think to get the chance to be selected against Leicester last week and uh, his performance, he never lets the side down, and he's taken his game to a new level. So he, he, he wants a piece of this action, you know, and I think he stepped up, and uh, he's someone who could go on that plane to New Zealand as well. He's not this seasoned international like the rest of them. James Ryan has had a big two weeks as well over in Leicester last week. He was very good, brilliant today as well. So um, just an utterly dominant performance, wasn't it? They were on the front foot so much. They could have scored another two or three tries. And the scoreboard probably in the end reflects 23-point difference. But Leinster could have got the 50 here easily. And uh, it, it was never in doubt. It was never in doubt. Hugo Keenan got the last try. He never misses a game. It's Mr. Consistency. Never misses a game and, and rarely makes any sort of a mistake. He's just been such a sensational How find for Ireland. How does he differ to Rob Kearney? Um, I just think he has this balance in, in his attack. Um, very good under the high ball. Rob Kearney was probably the best in the business at that. Great left boot. Uh, not the same attacking threat. Hugo Keenan just glides through the air and he, he hits that line. He wants to get the ball in his hands and he wants to run with it. And uh, he's just his decision making is really, really top class. So probably the difference, there's the difference is his, his attack is better. Rob Carney, I think it'd be hard to kind of argue and say that anyone is is is, is as good as him under a high ball. Keenan is incredibly competitive and just lovely, lovely balance to his game. What do you think Leo Cullen and Stuart Lancaster are saying right now? Just job done, forget about it, move on. They'll be very, very pleased. I think they would have been a little bit nervous coming into this game because everybody was talking up Leinster and talking down to lose. I think the fatigue, fatigue did play a part yeah. and a factor, but to lose are a side that are uncomfortable when they don't have the ball. They're when they have the ball and they're they're on the front foot and they're probably used to that in the top 14 being fairly dominant. But their form this year hasn't been great, and that was. Uh, that was spoken about last week and this week again. That uh, you know they've lost, I think, nine games in the top 14. Uh, Just kept going to the well, and sometimes you can't. Yeah, and uh, maybe the French involvement, and and they haven't been able to integrate their players back in after the Six Nations. They obviously a massive high win in the Grand Slam. Still, a lot of those young, those players are young. Into Mac Dupont, they're very young. Uh, they're world class players, but I think if Toulouse. It was probably an eye-opener for Hugo Mola today when you don't have the ball and the fitness level you need to get to. And Leinster have taken this to another level just with their cohesion and their ability to hold on to the ball for so long. You played in the 2008 final. You won man of the match against Toulouse, Quinny. Did you do anything differently between the semi-final and the final? Like the Leinster players, did you just like process now driven for them? Yeah, probably. Um, it, the semi-finals are hard to get over because it's kind of... Physically? Uh, yeah, physically it's hard and mentally as well. I think that whole kind of looking forward to a final takes care of itself. There's an, an adrenaline rush, there's an excitement. Um, you can take your eye off the ball a little bit. There's always a sense of relief. So they'll be very, very relieved that they're now through to the final. They have a chance to win it for the fifth time. And they'll want to rest their players now. I think I'd be amazed if any of those guys will be involved against Munster next week. They can't be caught at the top of the table. So... You know, they, they made the decision to, to leave their players home two weeks ago uh, from South Africa, all the all these players, all the internationals, and they look just fresh, energetic, full of enthusiasm, um, mentally and physically fresh. So I think that will be the case for the final, try and look forward to it. And, you know, I think they're, it'd be very, very hard for either Rassing or La Rochelle to stop them. Um, I'm sure... They'll ask questions of them, but Leinster are, are, are on the front foot now, and I think they're in a great position to, to, win, the, to win the final. Um, they have the ability and the luxury of, of resting their players next week and be really fresh for the following week. 
do, would they have a preference, do you think? Would there be a, a team that would suit them more than the other between La Rochelle and, and Racing? Um, well, they obviously beat Racing a number of years ago in a yeah. final and they, they lost to La Rochelle. There's kind of a two sides to that. Uh, revenge and uh, avenge that, that semi-final loss last year if they get La Rochelle. And I suspect deep down, and they won't admit this, that they'd prefer Racing. I think La Rochelle have a bit more grizzle about them. And even though they'll be facing two two monster men in the coaching tickets for either side, uh, Mike Prendergast for, for Rassing and, and Rog, if it's La Rochelle, deep down, I think they'd probably prefer Rassing. But I, I can guarantee you, John, you know, it will be about the process and it will be about getting themselves right. And I think they'll have a confidence and belief if they get their performance and play like this in the final that they'll believe they can win it. You're friendly with both Raj and Mike Prendergast. Do they watch Leinster? Are, are, are they so caught up in what they're doing in the top 14 and their own uh, lives and their own team that would they be nerds and watching all these rugby matches as well that are going on like Leinster and Munster? Are they keeping a, a close eye on what's going on in Ireland or is it the case of they'll have to do a lot of work? No, they... both of them may be very aware about yeah. what's going on in Ireland and where Leinster are at. You know, they would have seen Munster, Leinster a few weeks ago to keep an eye on, on all those results and performances. Um... I think obviously today they'd probably be, you know, getting themselves ready for their own performance and that they, that they require tomorrow. Um, but I'm sure they'll have watched the game today, but they won't be going in any sort of in-depth analysis. Until they're into, in the final themselves. Yeah, until either side is in the final. And then you've got to kind of... But I don't think there's any sort of chunks of weaknesses that you could have really take out of today's game. Maybe the second half against Leicester... Um, them, you know, the way Leinster kind of were on the back foot a little bit, but still they were very, very impressive defensively last week against against Leicester away in that second half. But I think they both sides and both coaches uh, will know that whoever, whichever one of them gets to the final against Leinster, that they won't be the favourites. Leinster will be clearly the favourites to win this now. And I was saying to Jerry Thornley and Keen Tracy before we had the commentary with yourself and Connor Allen that for some of these Leinster players they haven't been involved in a in a final. So Ronan Keller has won, Caelan Doris is another that comes to mind. And for them it's a it's a it's a new novel situation. There'll be uh, some butterflies and it's not all about experience. There's a blend of youth and experience here. Yeah, if you take go back a couple of years ago, James Ryan in two thousand and eighteen, Grand Slam, uh, European Cup. Uh, did they win the Pro 14 as well it was just uh, won yeah. a series in Australia beat New Zealand um, what a year so it, you don't necessarily have to have all this experience and, and, and have experienced pain and defeat before to to win a, win, win a final um, so you, you kind of blend that with obviously with the experience of, of Sexton he's been there so long and, and some of the ups and downs he's had um, and there's probably less baggage if you haven't been there before but you will still want to know what it's like and what the whole experience is like and how you prepare but I think there's so much experience in this Leinster side as well and a great blend of, of youthful enthusiasm as well that um, they, they'll they'll be able to kind of chat to each other and lean on each other about how you prepare for a final I think it, it's, it, it just takes me back it's, it's just a wonderful experience going to a European Cup final and being involved the whole colour the whole day and and it's, it's a challenging one when we think about it and we'll probably focus a little bit more on this in the build-up. It's in Marseille, it's in the south of France. It's a little bit trickier for, for Leinster. The final is going to be on here next year. But for Leinster, you know, they're, they're away from home. They're going to the south of France. Uh, La Rochelle and Racing effectively are away from home, but they're in their home country. So that may give them a little bit more hope and belief that... Um, that they can they can beat either of those sides could could possibly beat or challenge Leinster in the final, but on paper it's very very difficult to see any side beating Leinster at the moment. Any advice to any player playing in a Champions Cup final? Try and enjoy it and be in the moment, uh, soak it all up because there will be some pre-match nerves. I think uh, um, you have to enjoy the experience as well and try and you know you it sounds very simplistic and boring, but you have to treat it as any other game and yeah. not, not do anything different. So there is a difference for sure. It's a final. It's a European match. And I've always said this about European weeks when I played for Munster. They were different weeks. You know, if you're playing the Dragons or Edinburgh away in the, in the domestic league, you know, you're not, you don't have the same excitement or buzz during the week. The points are at stake, the league points, and you want to be up for it and win. But 
European weeks were different. So that goes to another level when you're in knockout stages because you have the colour, the travelling support, the excitement, the razzmatazz that goes with it. Um, but still, the fundamentals have to apply. You've got to train well that week. You've got to prepare. You've got to know the opposition. You've got to do your analysis. And you've got to be confident that you back your previous performances. And Leinster can look back all season and really, you know, look back at some great performances, uh, cohesive performances and consistent performances. So you want to try and take that into a final. Who knows? Sometimes it's in the lap of the gods. You know what sport can be like. Uh, you can be a hero one week and, and a villain the next week and, and or win one week as a team and lose the next week. But this side, I think, I just sense from their body language and the way they're going about this season that they're going to be incredibly hard to stop. And finally, Quinny, the fans, uh, like they weren't there for the La Rochelle game or the Saracens uh, quarterfinal defeat a couple of years ago. The 42,000 of them here today, it was a brilliant day. It was a glorious afternoon here in Dublin. They'll want as many of them as possible to go to Marseille and, and spur them on. They will, for sure. And, and I'm sure it'll be a full house. I'm sure, you know, all the Irish provinces, Ulster, Munster, Leinster, Connacht, if any of them, any of the other provinces were in that situation, you'd be guaranteed that there'd be thousands and thousands and thousands of Irish people go. Leinster have a great support. Um, and there'll be great colour there. There'll be great excitement. And... Again, they'll play their part, and they're really important. Um, you know, it's 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 a special day for them as well, and this is kind of a golden era, and you've got to maximise that and enjoy it as well as a fan. And uh, they're in a great position at the moment. Quinny, you've got a big day ahead of you as a Liverpool fan on the May the 28th. You've got to watch Leinster. I don't know if you're going to be in Marseille, and then you've got Liverpool against Real Madrid. I, and it's goalless at the moment between Chelsea and Liverpool. I'm going to be in Marseille, and uh, <laughs> if, if I wasn't going to be in Marseille, I'd be certainly be in, in, Paris. In, in, in Paris for the <laughs> final. Now, whether, where would I get a ticket from? I'd have to scramble left, right and centre. My son was uh, asking me, can we go? And I said, well, I've got to work for the, the final. Day job. Do the commentary for, for Virgin <laughs> for the final. And uh, But look, it, uh, I'll, I'll certainly... Uh, do the final and uh, then be keeping a very, very close eye in that Champions League final against Real Madrid. But well done to Leinster. You've got to say it. Uh, brilliant, brilliant performance again. So cohesive, so impressive in everything they did. And uh, they deserve to be there. OK, Quinny, thanks so much. Our rugby coverage and off the ball. Thanks to Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team, team of us, everyone in. Now... What's going on this evening? Dublin against Kilkenny in the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship, Brown Robin. Then in Munster tomorrow, Waterford against Cork and Clare versus Limerick. Plenty of hurling to look forward to. We're going to do that with the three-time All-Star Noel Connors next.